Live over to Capitol Hill for a hearing on the misuse of government-issued credit cards by federal agencies. Members of a House Government Reform Subcommittee are hearing testimony from representatives of the General Accounting Office, the General Services Administration, and various Defense Department agencies. California Congressman Steve Horn is chairing this hearing, which is just getting underway now. $125 billion budget. Last week, we learned that some Defense Department officials have been illegally tapping closed appropriations accounts despite a 10-year-old law that prohibits such actions. Today, we will examine the government's purchase credit card programs at two Navy units within the Department of Defense, the Space and Naval Warfare Systems Center and the Navy Public Works Center. Both are based in San Diego, California. This investigation was initiated by our first witness, Senator Charles Grassley from Ohio, from Iowa. Our second witnesses will come from the General Accounting Office. Last year, the Department of Defense used purchase cards, master cards, or visa cards for more than 10 million transactions valued at five and a half billion dollars. That figure represents more than one-third of the entire government's purchase uh, card transactions, which totaled $15 billion in fiscal year 2000. Unlike the government travel card program in which the cardholder pays the bill, the purchase card bills are paid by the federal government. This credit card program was designed to save money by eliminating bureaucracy and paperwork associated with making small purchases. As defined by the General Services Administration, small purchases are those under $2,500. In addition, federal agencies can receive rebates from the banks that issue the cards when the bills are paid promptly. Those benefits, however, do not consider the cost of fraudulent or improper use of the card. They, they fail to consider the cost of proper oversight and management of the programs. Most reasonable people would hardly construe these as legitimate and necessary government expenses, and all taxpayers would agree. Senator Grassley and I have asked the General Accounting Office to expand its investigation of the government purchase card program, as well as the travel card program. If the misuse and outright fraud found in these two Navy facilities are indicative of the government-wide programs and the cost of the programs may far outweigh its benefits. Our witnesses today have been involved in the implementation and oversight of government's purchase card program. In addition, we will hear testimony from witnesses who are responsible for the two Navy purchase programs audited by the General Accounting Office. We want to know how these abuses were allowed to occur and what is now being done to stop them. I welcome all of you, and we now look forward to your testimony. We will start with the gentleman from uh, Iowa, Senator Grassley, who was the one that uh, first picked this up, and uh, he's uh, got a very good reputation for looking at misuse of the taxpayers' money. We're delighted to have him with an opening statement, and we would like him to come with us when that statement is over and join us here for the question period. And it's a pleasure to have you here, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I want to compliment you for doing, doing a thorough job of our constitutional responsibilities of oversight to see that money is spent according to the Constitution and congressional policy and to make sure that the laws are faithfully executed. I'm glad to join you in that effort. And so I thank you for inviting me to testify on credit card abuse. It's an honor and privilege to be here and especially to work with you on a very important issue. As the chairman knows, in recent years, I've become increasingly concerned about the total breakdown of internal financial controls at the Defense Department. My concern are reinforced by the continuous stream of audits issued by the General Accounting Office and the DOD Inspector General. Uh, these audits consistently show that sloppy accounting and non-existent internal controls leave the Department of Defense's financial resources vulnerable to theft, 
and to abuse. In 97-98, as chairman of the Judiciary Subcommittee on Administrative Oversight, I conducted my own review of internal controls at the Department of Defense. I issued a report and held a hearing. I came away from the experience convinced that there were no effective internal controls in place. Stealing money was a piece of cake. Fraudulent activity, if detected, was detected by chance and not, oddly enough, as a result of effective internal controls. This work taught me one very important lesson about government bookkeeping. Bookkeeping is the key to controlling the money. If your books of account are accurate and complete, it's easy to follow the, pay, the money trail, and that makes it hard then to steal money, and that's how it should be. By contrast, if your bookkeeping is sloppy and non-existent, as it is at the Pentagon today, then there's no money trail, and that makes it easy to steal money. And that's exactly why I'm so concerned about the Pentagon's mushrooming credit card operation. Credit cards weaken controls, erase the audit trail. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to focus on the dangers of credit card proliferation in what I will characterize as zero control environment. Today, there are over one and eight tenths million Department of Defense cards in circulation that generate about $9 billion a year in expenditures. A credit card is a license to spend money. Any person with a credit card is authorized to spend money with no checks and balances. In the past, Department of Defense employees needed a phony invoice to trigger a fraudulent check, and getting a fraudulent Treasury check took some doing. Well, now that obstacle is gone. Credit cards then provide a shortcut to the cash pile. The Pentagon is giving everyone a big scoop shovel and telling them to rip into the national money sack and do it at both ends. The Department of Defense has created an army of spenders. With the Department of Defense credit card in hand, they have almost unlimited authority to spend money. There are no controls, no responsibilities, no accountability. If they want to spend money, they go to the nearest ATM machine or use a DOD convenience check to get cash, and they're doing it with alarming regularity. If they need a new computer or a Palm Pilot, they go to CompuAUSA and charge it, keep it. If they need something for the house, they go to Home Depot and charge it. If they feel like a night out on the town, they go to a nightclub and charge it. Pentagon credit cards are being taken on a shopping spree, and the taxpayers are footing the bill. The General Accounting Office testimony today, I think, will clearly show that no one is minding the store. No one is checking to see if the goods and services charged to a purchase car charge card account were received and no one is checking to verify the charges if they were legitimate, and that is required by law. The General Accounting Office reports that purchase cards are being used to buy expensive items for personal use with no accountable records. There were over 500 known purchase card fraud cases in the last two years alone, and with just a small sample, the General Accounting Office found more. The worst part of it, Mr. Chairman, is no one seems to care. The Defense Finance and Accounting Service simply pays the bill in full, no questions asked. Mr. Chairman, I know you have looked at the Department of Defense travel cards, and they remain a festering problem. They need more attention, and they offer us a rare glimpse at a root cause of the Department of Defense control problem. As I said, credit cards are licensed to spend money, and they're being issued with no road test. They're being issued willy-nilly with no credit checks. Mr. Chairman, that may sound like that's got to be wrong, but that's true. There are no credit checks. Even purchase cards with their $100,000 limit are issued with no credit check. One credit card company, the Bank of America, identifies high-risk individuals. But the bank's appraisal in the case of the military is irrelevant. 
At the Pentagon, everyone gets a card. This is a fatal flaw in the program. It leaves the door wide open to fraud and abuse. Military and civilian personnel who could never qualify for credit suddenly find themselves with unlimited credit on a government credit card. The application form itself helps to set the stage for fraud and abuse. It's right up front on the application. No credit check is an option, and all the applicant has to do is check box B, quote unquote, no credit check. When first time card holders see this, they must lick their chops, obviously. No credit check is the same as no control. A no credit check, everybody gets a travel card policy is causing account delinquencies to go ballistic. As you know, Mr. Chairman, there are over 43,000 Department of Defense employees, civilian and military, who have defaulted on more than $59 million in charges for what is supposed to be authorized travel. This, of course, is a black mark on the armed forces. The Department of Defense is supposed to pay the cardholder, but the money doesn't always get to the bank. The government has no liability for unpaid balances, and the bank has no collection authority and earns no interest. The bank has to write off the delinquencies, thus take a loss. And the losses are mounting fast. They now exceed $200 million. There is a case of the Marine sergeant who ran up a $20,000 bill and then left the service, and the unpaid bill when his enlistment was up. That case is not unique. There is a soldier who spent $3,100 on a nightclub the dead sailor who spent $3,565, an Army reservist wife who spent $13,053 on a shopping spree in Puerto Rico. The Marine Sergeant, Sergeant X, was initially issued a restricted card in March 2000 because of a questionable credit record. The restricted status put the lid on Sergeant X's credit allowance, but not for long. On March 21st, the Marine Corps arbitrarily <laughs> raised his credit limit from $2,500 to $10,000. The higher limit precipitated a spending spree. Then the alarm bells went off at the bank. There was a fraud alert on August the 3rd due to, quote, unusual account activity, end of quote. Two weeks later, Sergeant X got special permission to make charges on a blocked merchant category code, and I'm going to refer to that as MCC at a civilian closed store like Macy's. The next day, August the 18th, Sergeant X's credit limit was raised again to $20,000. Then Sergeant X's account became past due and then de delinquent. Now, despite all the red warning flags, the Marine Corps raised Sergeant X's credit limit one last time, January the 29th, 2001. This time it went to $25,000. In just one two-month period, Sergeant X made cash withdrawals totaling $8,500. The bank thinks he was using the cash withdrawals to make payments on his credit card account. Finally, in February, Sergeant X's credit was revoked. Mr. Chairman, the Marine Corps was warned, but looked the other way while Sergeant X robbed the bank. Mr. Chairman, I hope you will join me in asking the in Inspector General to examine these cases and determine whether the Department of Defense is paying for unauthorized expenses and whether others could be involved in stealing money. The driver behind the delinquencies are cash withdrawals from the ATM machines for personal use. Cash withdrawals totaled $500 million last year. Well, no, per year, I should say. Over 2,000, er, I'm sorry, over 20 percent of all Department of Defense travel card transactions are cash transactions. Now, this is five times the industry average. Most cash, tra cash transactions go delinquent and are written off as bad debt. Attempted access to block the MCC codes, like Sergeant X's case, is a tip off, it's the warning flag. Many MCCs are blocked, like online gambling, casinos, Toys R Us, and the like. The bank knows when a card is used to gain access to a blocked MCC code. 
The banks also know that an honest, successful hit on a blocked MCC code is almost always followed immediately by a successful hit at the nearest ATM machine. ATMs are used to circumvent the block MCC code to make an unauthorized purchase. Mr. Chairman, the bank gave the Pentagon an anti-fraud control device. It's called by the acronym uh, EAGLES, E-A-G-L-S. It provides an online capability to detect suspicious account activity and delinquencies, information needed to take corrective action, in other words. Daily account activities on Eagles should be watched like a hawk. If Sergeant X was getting cash at the ATM machine without travel orders, his access to the cash machine should have been shut down. Unfortunately, Eagles' control is ignored. Nobody uses it. The thinking behind the Department of Defense credit card explosion is good. Reduce the paperwork. Save money. Streamline the process. Adopt best practices of the commercial sector. In the private sector, credit cards are a big business. That's because the control environment is good. Monthly bills are reconciled and are paid promptly. In corporate America, if you, if you abuse your card, you lose it or you get fired. In the Pentagon, there's no accountability and no control. Trust and accountability are key ingredients in any cred credit card program. Trust and accountability go hand in hand because a credit card provides direct, unrestricted access to cash. Credit cards create low control environment. The credit card environment requires a high degree and level of trust and accountability. Mr. Chairman, low control credit card environment is incompatible with zero control environment at the Pentagon. Issuing credit cards willy-nilly with no credit checks in a zero control environment is a recipe for disaster. And that's exactly where we are today, Mr. Chairman, a disaster. And Bank of America is holding the bag. And the bank can only blame itself for being in such a predicament. The bank signed the contract. The bank agreed to assume all the risk and all the responsibility, but with absolutely no authority. All the authority rests squarely in the hands of the Pentagon. The contracts give the Department of Defense absolutely veto authority over the bank's decisions. On the most important decisions of all, whether to do credit checks, the Pentagon is forcing the bank to adopt worse business practices of the public sector. The contract mandate, mandates the policy. There shall be no control filter with credit checks. Everybody gets a card, even those with bad credit records. Mr. Chairman, the no credit checks, everybody gets a card policy allows the abuser to rob the bank. And the Department of Defense is backing them up. That is causing the bank to sustain unacceptable losses. Bank of America's predecessor, American Express, endured the same fate. So something has to give. It seems like the current arrangement is very unworkable. I know the Department of Defense is trying to fine tune the process, but recent improvements are very modest. The root cause of the problem remains untouched, no control, and no credit checks. If the Department of Defense is serious about adopting the best practices of the commercial sector, then the Department of Defense has to do an about face maneuver. Department of Defense must give the bank authority to decide who can be trusted with a card and what the credit limit should be on each account. This rule should apply to travel as well as purchase cards. I think that this would solve the problem I think that's the key, Mr. Chairman. Modify the contract to allow credit checks and regulate limits. Seems to be very simple. In closing, Mr. Chairman, Secretary Rumsfeld has made a personal commitment to clean up the financial mess at the Pentagon. Obviously, he's just getting started. And we know how things take several years. And it may be that uh, true with Semper, 
Secretary Rumfeld's best efforts before we see results. I support his efforts 100 percent and look forward to some very good results. So nothing I have said here today should be taken as criticism of Secretary Rumsfeld. The problems I have addressed are the result of decisions made in previous administrations and main, mainly by former Deputy Secretary of Defense, Hamry. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. We thank you, Senator, and please join us here. And we will now bring all of the witnesses uh, and uh, administer the oath and uh, also uh, we'll tell you about how this uh I, I would like all of the assistants that will be whispering in various ears to also take the oath so I don't have to interrupt this testimony and so just get them all and the clerk will take the name so we have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Uh, so please raise your hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you will give before this subcommittee will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. The clerk will note that all affirmed and get the ones that were assistants, the people that really know what's going on. So uh, if uh, we're, I just want to make sure we have all the uh, witnesses here. And uh, the uh, first will be uh, Mr. Coots of the uh, United States General Accounting Office, accompanied by Robert Hast, Managing Director, Special Investigations, U.S. General Accounting Office. Captain Ernest L. Valdez, Commander, Space and Naval Warfare System Center in San Diego. Captain John E. Sirash, uh, the Commanding Officer, Navy Public Works Center, San Diego. Uh, Vice Admiral Keith W. Lippert, the uh, Director of the Defense Logistics Agency, former Commanding Officer, Naval Supply Systems Command, and he is accompanied by Larry Glasgow, the Executive Director of the Navy Supply Systems Command, and Jerry Hinton, Director of Finance, Defense, uh, Finance and Accounting uh, Service, uh, Patricia Mead, the uh, Acting Deputy Assistant Commissioner, uh, Federal Supply Service, General Services Administration, accompanied by Sue McIver, the Director, Ser Services Acquisition Center, Federal Supply Service, General Services Administration. And we have Deidre uh, Lee, Director of Defense Procurement Department of Defense. And uh, we will now start with the uh, gentleman with the uh, uh, United States uh, uh, GAO, General Accounting Office. That reports, for those of you that uh, are not familiar with them, to the Controller General of the United States. And it is an arm of the Congress, the legislative branch. And uh, they do excellent work, and we're both Senator Grassley and I have certainly made great use out of the GAO in our years in the Congress. So uh, we will now start in with Mr. Coots, the Director of Financial Management and Assurance. Mr. Chairman and Senator Grassley, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here to testify on the results of our audit of Navy purchase cards. With me this morning is Bob Hast, Managing Director of our Office of Special Investigations and an expert in credit card security issues. Purchase cards were introduced into the government in the 1980s primarily to streamline the acquisition process for small purchases. Usage of purchase cards is growing quickly in the federal government, increasing from about $2 billion in 1995 to about $12 billion in 2000. DOD's purchase card usage for fiscal year 2000 was about $5 billion. With rapid growth in the usage of purchase cards, establishment of effective internal controls is critical to prevent fraud, waste, and abuse. I have a purchase card in my hand here, 
that Citibank was kind enough to provide for today's hearing. As you can see, it looks like a normal credit card. Navy's card is a MasterCard and can be used wherever MasterCard is accepted. However, notice that it says, for official U.S. government purchases only. As requested initially by Senator Grassley, our audit focused on Navy purchase card activity in the San Diego area using a case study approach at Spaywar Systems Center, or Spaywar, and Navy Public Works Center, or Public Works. These two Navy activities, which provide goods and services to their Navy clients, had about $68 million of purchase card activity in fiscal year 2000. The bottom line of my testimony this morning is that we found significant breakdowns in purchase card controls in the San Diego area. These breakdowns contributed to fraudulent and abusive spending and theft and misuse of government property. My testimony has three parts. The overall purchase card internal control environment, the effectiveness of key internal controls, and third, fraudulent and abusive usage of purchase cards. First, we found an ineffective overall internal control environment at Spay Warren Public Works. Our work has shown that the lack of a strong internal control environment leads to the risk of improper behavior. For example, neither Spaywar nor Public Works had effective policies over the issuance of purchase cards. Any employee having supervisor approval could basically get a purchase card. As a result, as shown on the poster board, we found a proliferation of purchase cards with 36% of Spaywar and 16% of Public Works employees holding purchase cards. In contrast, we found that for six large defense contractors, no more than 4% of employees held purchase cards. And at GAO, about 2% of our employees hold purchase cards. This control breakdown resulted in over 1,700 cardholders, each with a monthly spending limit of over $20,000. We found no compelling reason why over 1,700 individuals were given the power to make purchasing decisions for the federal government. We found other overall internal control weaknesses relating to rebate management, training, and the usage of internal audits. In fact, at Spaywar, we found evidence that management ignored internal review results that demonstrated some of the very same problems that we found. Second, with the ineffective overall control environment I just described, it is not surprising that the four basic controls we tested were ineffective. These controls include independent documentation of receipt of goods, independent certification of the monthly credit card bill, timely recording of purchases into the accounting records, and recording of property purchases into the property inventory records. These four controls are intended to provide reasonable insurance as to the integrity of purchase card transactions. As shown on the poster board, we estimate control failure rates of 35 to 100 percent for fiscal year 2000. The primary problem we found was that Navy employees were simply not following basic policies and procedures. For example, for 65 percent of spay war, and 47% of Public Works transactions, we found no evidence that a person independent of the cardholder validated that goods and services were received. This control is intended to minimize the risk, for example, of employees going on a personal shopping spree. Unfortunately, the high failure rate for fiscal year 2000 clearly shows that this control was ineffective. In addition, Spay War and Public Works did not record property purchases in inventory records as required by Navy policy. When we asked to inspect 65 items from our sample, the two commands could not provide conclusive evidence that 31 items, including laptop computers and digital cameras, were in possession of the government. One of the 31 items was a video conferencing camera reported as stolen. For this item, we found that the responsible Public Works employee had received and deposited in his personal checking account $2,500 from a personal insurance claim. 
Only after being confronted by our investigators did the employee reimburse the government with a personal check. Third, we found fraudulent and abusive transactions involving Navy, SAG, Navy San Diego activities, including Spay War and Public Works. Weak internal controls contributed to five recent cases of alleged purchase card fraud related to Navy activities in the San Diego area. Two of these related to public works. These purchase card fraud cases, which so far total over $660,000, involve numerous purchases of items for personal gain. Examples included home improvement items from the Home Depot, laptop computers, Palm Pilots, DVD players, an air conditioner, clothing, jewelry, eyeglasses, and pet supplies. The control breakdowns related to these frauds were so pervasive that the total dollar amount could not be determined. One cardholder sentenced to 15 months in prison commented that illegal usage of the purchase card was too easy. Another of the Navy purchase card fraud cases involved compromise of as many as 2,600 purchase cards for Navy activities in the San Diego area. Navy investigators were only able to obtain a partial list of 681 compromised accounts. The account number showed up on a computer printer at a, computer, at a community library in San Diego in 1999. However, the Navy has not yet canceled the compromised accounts. Rather, they're only canceling the accounts as fraudulent activity is identified. Navy investigators estimated that as of January 2001, at least 27 alleged suspects used 30 of the compromised account numbers. These suspects made more than $27,000 in fraudulent purchases of pizza, jewelry, phone calls, tires, and flowers. With ineffective internal controls, preventing and detecting fraudulent purchases for compromised accounts will be virtually impossible. As of May 21, 2001, we identified 22 compromised spay war accounts that are still active. We also found transactions at spay war and public works that we believe are potentially fraudulent or abusive. As shown on the poster board, the potentially fraudulent purchases include personal items such as cosmetics from Mary Kay and gift certificates from Nordstrom. It is unclear whether these purchases were made by Navy employees or were due to compromised accounts. The ineffective monthly certification control resulted in payment of these obviously unauthorized purchases. However, we found evidence that Navy subsequently received credit from Citibank for these items. We referred all potentially fraudulent transactions to Mr. Hast and his team for further investigation. The abusive purchases relate primarily to spay war and include items where the purchase was at an excessive cost, questionable government need, or both. For example, as shown on the poster board, we found purchases of items such as flat panel computer monitors costing from $800 to $2,500 each. We believe the cost of these monitors is excessive when compared to standard GSA monitors that cost about $300 each. In addition, we found items purchased that were of questionable government need, including Palm Pilots, designer Palm Pilot carrying cases, and a leather briefcase from the coach store. Accessories were also purchased for the Palm Pilots, including keyboards, travel kits, additional memory, modems, and belt clips. We found no documentation to justify these as valid government purchases. Rather, it appears that these purchases were often made to satisfy the personal preferences of purchase card holders. In summary, we found that Navy's management of the purchase card program in the San Diego area is simply not acceptable. We found significant problems with every aspect of the program that we reviewed. These problems contributed to fraudulent and abusive usage of purchase cards. I testified before this subcommittee in May on the importance of fixing DOD's serious financial management problems. Last week, we testified that DOD made $615 million of illegal and improper adjustments to closed appropriation accounts. Today, 
you see another example of what can happen when financial management is broken and accountability is lost. The individuals here from the Navy appear to be very capable people who can fix these problems. To do so, they will need to demonstrate leadership in this area and establish accountability, proper incentives, and consequences for their employees to ensure proper behavior. We will be issuing a report with recommendations after this hearing. We are available to work with the Navy to implement those recommendations. Mr. Chairman, that ends my statement. Mr. Hast and I would be happy to answer questions when the others give their statements. Well, thank you very much for that presentation. We have faith in the GAO, and uh, you just do a marvelous job. So thank you. Uh, our next uh, witness is uh, Captain Ernest L. Valdez, the commander of the Space and Naval Warfare Systems Center in San Diego, otherwise known as SPAWAR. I don't Mr. know Chairman. what order. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Valdez. Did you want me to proceed, sir? Yes. Mr. Chairman, Senator Grassley, thank you for the opportunity to discuss the Navy's Purchase Card Program. I entered a full statement uh, to the committee, and I'd like to provide a uh, summary statement at this time. Without objection, it's in the record. I might add automatically here when you're called, the whole statement goes you, in. Sir. And we'd like you to summarize it. Yes, sir. Because the sooner we can summarize it and get into a dialogue with Senator Grassley and myself and any others that uh, want to appear. And so uh, that we you. want to get a positive way. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Captain Ernest Valdez, Commanding Officer, Space and Naval Warfare Systems Center, San Diego. It's my job to command an organization whose mission is to provide the joint warfighter with the technology to collect, process, display, and transfer information necessary to conduct military operations. My command is one of the many Navy activities that uses and relies on the Government Purchase Card Program. We are a major command within the Navy and employ a workforce of approximately 80 military and 3,400 civilian government personnel, consisting primarily of scientists, engineers, and computer specialists. My command manages more than 1,000 projects, both large and small, for in research and development, test and evaluation, installation and in-service engineering, in support of the Navy and Marine Corps. For fiscal year 2000, SSC revenues were over $1.2 billion. The Navy's purchase card program greatly facilitates the timely and efficient response to our fleet and customer needs and is crucial to fulfilling our mission in support of Naval forces. For over 10 years, SSC San Diego has effectively managed a purchase card program that makes over 50,000 purchases a year, valued at approximately $45 million per year. The success of our program is based upon effective management controls and in the trust we have in our cardholders, who are career civil service employees or active duty service members. We firmly believe the purchases being made for are for legitimate government purposes. For example, during an upgrade of the operations center of USS Blue Ridge, a command and control ship forward deployed in Japan. Our team of engineers and technicians found computer and local area network components requiring immediate replacement or repair. During this effort, which included an installation of an entire network on board the command ship and a major upgrade to its command and control system, we placed 30 people on board the Blue Ridge for over three weeks working round the clock to complete this effort. The use of the purchase card resulted in immediate government savings by allowing the team to quickly procure necessary items and contributed significantly to successful upgrade of Blue Ridge, accomplished in time for an upcoming operational exercise. In addition to the trust we place in our cardholders, we have management controls to oversee the program. These management controls include, as a first line of defense, responsibility of the cardholders to review and challenge any discrepancies on their monthly card statements. Approving officials then review their individual cardholder statements as a second line of review. My command's agency program coordinator further reviews a random sample of cardholder statements each month, contacting cardholders and their supervisors when deficiencies are noted. 
including taking the action of revoking the card for misuse or in, in, in other areas disciplinary action to the cardholder. Given the significant size of this program, we conduct regular reviews that occasionally reveal misuse or compromise of the purchase card. For example, our internal review process disclosed an employee's misuse of a purchase card for personal items while on travel. In this and other similar cases, cardholder authority was revoked. We also rely on our workforce to do the right thing and report cases of purchase card abuse, either directly to their supervisor or through hotline calls. We've seen a few cases that reveal compromise of a purchase card by third parties outside the Navy. That is, the card number was stolen, and this resulted in the purchase of cosmetics and items at a record music store. In these instances of compromise or stolen purchase cards, the affected cardholders immediately reported and disputed the charges, and the cases were resolved in favor of the cardholders. And I refer to the Mary Kay issue that uh, the GAO discussed earlier. That was an incident of a stolen credit card number. I will now address the specific GAO findings and address weaknesses in the program that merit attention and follow-up action. Our first action was to review the number of purchase card holders at my command, and we have reduced the number of card holders at the center by 18 percent. Our existing program is to require that all card holders receive training prior to receiving the purchase card. We experienced a backlog in refresher training, and I intend to correct that problem by accelerating the training schedule to complete all training and refresher training by the end of the fiscal year. SSC San Diego relies on the following procedures and management controls to execute our program and combat vulnerability to abuse. First, a mandatory initial training program and follow-on refresher training every two years. These are existing management controls at the center. <clears throat> Supervisory oversight of cardholders' use and need. Cardholder review of their monthly statements. Approving officials' review of their individual cardholder statements. We conduct random reviews every month by the agency program coordinator. And we have an aggressive action plan to correct deficiencies through counseling, retraining, and cardholder revocation. For the serious cases, Mr. Chairman, we conduct formal investigations and, and pursue disciplinary action. Finally, SSC San Diego has recognized that the purchase card program was a manual, paper-intensive process that would benefit from the employment of modern e-business solutions. My command recently implemented an enterprise resource planning system incorporating best commercial practices and utilizing commercial off-the-shelf software. This system will substantially improve our business processes at the command, including the purchase card program and significantly improve our documentation issues that the GAO auditors highlighted. In conclusion, Mr. Chairman, the Purchase Card Program is vital to the successful implementation of SSC San Diego's mission to support our Navy and Marine Corps team. I also believe that the implementation of enterprise resource planning will greatly improve the management tools available to oversee the program, while providing our workforce the necessary flexibility to accomplish the Center's mission in support of our naval forces. Mr. Chairman, Senator, thank you for giving me this opportunity to address the committee, and I'll address questions at, at any time, sir. I think at this point uh, we're going to yield to Senator Grassley because he has another appointment coming, and he'll question you and some of the others even though you haven't had a chance to give your uh, testimony at this point. <clears throat> Uh, I, I have my questions of the General Accounting Office, but I hope that before the day is over we hear that part of the uh, solution to the issues that we have before us uh, is uh, that we're going to give the normal uh, commercial way of checking credit uh, for the issue of the credit card uh, to have the authority to uh, issue credit cards to those that have good credit risk as opposed to everybody and I hope the Defense Department would look to the uh, Defense Department or look to the banks for that normal uh, commercial way of doing business. Uh, Mr. Uh, Coots, in 97-98 uh, you provided extensive support for my review of internal controls at the Department of Defense 
we discovered that supporting documentation like receiving reports simply did not exist. At the conclusion of that review, which was in September 98, Mr. Hamry launched the Purchase Card Initiative. Purchase cards uh, eliminate the need for receiving reports. Do you think that the purchase cards was uh, the Department of Defense answers to the internal control problems that, the, uh, that we uncovered in 1998? I believe most of the problem of what we found is actually implementation of policies and procedures. As part of this study, we found certain flaws in policies and procedures, but for the most part, the controls that we looked at, the issue was that the employees were not either doing the control or leaving a documentation trail that shows that they did the control. So I think we believe that our, the problems that we found are for the most part employee following actually mostly valid policies and procedures. The General Accounting Office has documented extensive misuse of purchase cards. To what extent have you checked the Department of Defense payment records to verify that taxpayers' dollars have been used to cover unauthorized purchases? I guess as part of this review, we, we audited the underlying records for these two locations. We're doing a DOD-wide purchase card review for you and Chairman Horn, as was discussed earlier today. So beyond the depart or what we found at these two locations, as you mentioned in your opening statement, we're aware that for the two-year period there are 500 or so frauds DOD-wide. But beyond these two locations, we really can't speak to other findings or issues with respect to the purchase card program at DOD. Uh, has anyone examined the Department of Defense payment records to determine if the Department of Defense is using tax dollars to cover unauthorized per, uh, per charges on travel card accounts, uh, and uh, this is in regard to uh, also my asking the internal or the in inspector general uh, to do uh, an examination of the most egregious cases like Sergeant X that I talked about in my opening comments. We're doing a DOD wide audit of travel cards for you and Chairman Horn, and again, beyond that, I don't. I know Chairman Horn had a hearing on that in the spring and the issues with respect to the delinquencies of the department were discussed extensively. Uh, beyond that, we're in the middle of putting a plan together to look at this DOD-wide, and we will look at all aspects of management of the travel card program at the department and hopefully report back to you and Chairman Horn in the spring. Okay. And, Mr. Chairman, that will be the last of my questioning, but once again, uh, I want to thank you for your leadership in this area and uh, would pledge to continue to work with you. Well, it's always a pleasure to work with you. You've, uh, when I was a Senate staff member in the early 60s, there was uh, Senator Williams of Delaware, and he was the one that really looked after all this, and uh, I'm glad to see that uh, your fine work uh, goes in Senator Williams uh, uh, doing it. And uh, they, uh, they woke up when uh, he came in for asking questions, and I think they'll hopefully they will get your questions and get the point. In the group uh, two days ago, I said we're going to have another hearing in three months. We're not going to just let this drift, and uh, we're going to do that until the Pentagon gets organized and uh, starts uh, doing what the uh, any corporate building or corporate. Uh, uh, group would uh, not do what you do. It's, so we need to get you on track. And uh, when the Bank of America came in to see me, I said, goodbye, folks. Don't even talk to me about it. That, uh, you know, you've taken that risk and you should have, uh, uh, you should have uh, uh, done just what the Bank of America would have done to its own people. So thank you. So we'll go down the line now and get everybody's testimony, then I've got a whole series of questions. So uh, Captain uh, John E. Sarash, the commanding officer for the Navy Public Works Center in San Diego. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm Captain Jack Sarash, commanding officer of the Navy Public Works Center in San Diego. Sir, we provide the full range of public works services to the Navy and Marine Corps activities in the San Diego area. 
These services are provided to over 3,000 buildings on seven major bases, as well as military family housing located at several off-base sites. These commands and activities, including support for the many ships at the waterfront in San Diego Bay, consist of over 400 clients located in a 200 square mile area. We must operate our business with the same price, quality, customer service, and competitiveness issues that challenge and motivate all commercial businesses. The Public Works Center employs a workforce consisting of 14 military and approximately 1,700 civilian and contractor personnel. Prior to the introduction of purchase cards, we obtained material requirements through a central procurement office. Frankly, this was a very cumbersome, bureaucratic, expensive, and slow procedure. The purchase card plays a critical role in handling our daily operations in support of the Navy fleet and Marine Corps. During fiscal year 2000, my cardholders made over 56,000 purchase card transactions value, valued at approximately $30 million. The purchase card replaced a procurement system that was not cost or time effective for small dollar purchases. Mr. Chairman, in 1999, my command's internal review process uncovered se several areas of concern. To determine whether these concerns were unique or systemic, we took the rather extraordinary step of requesting a, re a review of our, <coughs> of our purchase card program by the Naval Audit Service. The auditors uh, periodically updated me on these findings, and based on their updates, I directed a number of changes be put in place. In September of 2000, we published a completely revised purchase card instruction with strengthened internal control procedures. I instructed my, my agency program coordinator to conduct stand-down training for all cardholders, supervisors, and approving officials. Purchase cards were suspended for any employee who did not attend this training. I also required my agency uh, program coordinator to, to conduct refresher training on an annual basis for all cardholders, supervisors, and approving officials. We reviewed the number of purchase card holders, resulting in a, an approximate 30% reduction from about 360 down to 247 card holders. As a part of our new process, we now require the card holder, the supervisor, and the approving official to sign a certification on each monthly card holder statement. I tasked my supervisors to, refu to review the card holder package and provided them with a checklist to aid their review. I directed that all original purchase card documents be maintained in one central location so that if the need arose, all documents could be easily retrievable. I also strengthened internal controls for the, dis for the dispute process. JO's audit covered fiscal year 2000. Mr. Chairman, I would point out that this is approximately the same period that the Naval Audit Service uh, was conducting their review of my command. However, based on the GAO review, I learned there were, there were a couple of areas that that still needed to be addressed. So as a result of their investigation, uh, I took the following action. A key issue was ensuring separation of functions between the person ordering material and the person receiving and accepting it. Our program had allowed cardholders to order and receive materials and services so long as someone else had made the original request for the material. I've now issued a revision to that policy that strictly requires that someone other than the cardholder accept and receive material and services. Although our cardholders had received the required training, I issued contracting uh, warrants based upon the training they took. The training records were discarded at the time we, d we issued the new instruction, uh, and, uh, and we conducted stand-down training. I've now directed that all future training and contracting warrants be maintained for historical uh, audit purposes. In addition, I've added another person to my command's internal uh, review staff and initiated a program where they independently perform a review of the purchase pro card program every month. JO presented a list of 39 questionable purchases. Mr. Chairman, we were already aware of 20 of these, all from three cardholders, as a result of our normal internal investigations. All 20 transactions were being handled through appropriate means involving our internal review office, consultation with the Naval Criminal Investigation Office, and our own legal counsel. Research on the additional 19 transactions revealed 12 were in fact proper, two were disputed and credits were received, and two involved cardholders using the wrong card by mistake. Three, the final three were valid official requirements, however, the purchase card was the incorrect procurement tool to use. 
In addition, the General Accounting Office identified 21 purchases that have been improperly split to stay under purchase card uh, thresholds. Further re research shows that 12 were in fact split purchases. Mr. Chairman, however, much of the work at uh, the Public Works Center is task-oriented. Purchases are made based on requirements that are known at a specific point in time. As work progresses, similar requirements may become evident and purchases are made to fulfill the additional requirements. In these cases, it may appear the purchases have been in split to circumvent the purchase limits when, in fact, the purchases were made based on requirements as they were known at the time. However, this is an area that we know we have to continually watch, and I have directed my people to do so. In summary, Mr. Chairman, we have previously recognized that management and control of our purchase card program required increased attention. The General Accounting Office pointed out some additional areas where revisions to the program were needed, and we are quickly making those changes. The Purchase Card Program provides my command a flexible and powerful procurement method, one I truly believe makes us more responsive and cost-effective in meeting Navy and Marine Corps requirements. I fully recognize that proper controls are a key element, and I am committed to ensuring these controls are in place. This concludes my summary statement, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. And uh, we now go to uh, Vice Admiral Keith W. Lippert, the Director of Defense Logistics Agency, former Commanding Officer, Navy Su Supply Systems Command. You went from one hot seat to the other. I, yes, sir. Because yes, uh, th the last I knew, I thought there was a Lieutenant General from the Army on the Great Beret issue. <laughs> so uh, you're, you're seasoned. Yes, sir. So go ahead. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you for the opportunity today to discuss the Department of Navy Purchase Card Program. I'm Vice Admiral Keith Lippert, currently serving as the Director of the Defense Logistics Agency. I took over on the 20th of July. I previously served as the Commander Naval Supply Systems Commander, NAV SUP, from August of 1999 to the 11th of July, 2001. NAV SUP is the Department of the Navy's Purchase Card Program Manager. And in this capacity, we are responsible for the establishment of Navy and Marine Corps policies and procedures for use of the purchase card and the management of purchase card services provided by Citibank. I'm aware that there are issues surrounding the purchase card program. The Department of the Navy is addressing these issues, and I am confident that the policies, procedures, and metrics that are in place to manage this 12-year-old purchase card <coughs> program are adequate and comparable to the best practices of private industry. However, there can be improvements. The General Accounting Office noted during their outbrief to the Department of the Navy that its written purchase card policies and procedures are generally adequate. The Department of the Navy recognizes that program execution is not always perfect. Oversight procedures, however, exist to identify and address areas of concern. The Department of the Navy's Purchase Card Program is very successful overall and represents a significant business revolution in how the Department of the Navy purchases supplies and services. The card allows the purchase of commercially available supplies and services without the delay incident to traditional purchasing process. The Purchase Card also reduces cost by consolidating transactions into a single monthly invoice for payment. The Department of the Navy's reliance on the purchase card continues to grow. Today, the Department of the Navy buys 99% of all requirements valued at $2,500 or less through the purchase card. And throughout the Navy Marine Corps and every command and activity, there are more than 30,000 purchase cards, with 9,100 approving officials and 1,800 agency program coordinators providing management and oversight. The Department of Navy Purchase Card Policy establishes the structure and procedures used to manage the card program. The Department of Navy's Purchase Card Policy is available in hard copy and on the Naval Supply Systems Command website, making it readily accessible to all. The Department of Navy's Policy establishes controls for the oversight and management of the program from the Department of Navy's major command level to the local activity cardholder. The controls cannot completely eliminate occurrence of misuse. They can, however, defer and identify misuse. The greatest strength of the system is employee honesty. The workforce is relied upon to properly use the card and to report misuse. The Department of Navy's Purchase Card Program is structured in a way to place responsibility and accountability at the lowest possible level. 
and the Department of Navy's trust that its employees and, will, and they will execute these responsibilities with integrity. There are three separate processes that provide checks and balances. The first is the establishment of accountability at the various levels of the program. The program establishes oversight responsibility for each level of the subsequent levels below them. This structure is similar to that used by Citibank for its corporate customers and creates a multi-tiered network of oversight. The first tier is the agency program coordinator, establishes cardholder limits and restricts vendor list, and conducts semi-annual reviews of purchase card use. And also resident at the local level is the approving official who certifies all purchase invoices prior to payment. Another level of oversight is performed by the Department of Navy's contracting personnel. Contracting personnel approve and monitor execution of purchase card activities. Financial management policy also establishes procedures for funds control. Additional reviews are also conducted by the Navy and DOD inspector generals and audit services. And finally, Citibank, the Department of Navy's bank card contractor, constantly monitors purchase card transactions. Since the inception of the purchase card contract with Citibank in November of 1998, the Department of Navy has made over 7 million credit cards transactions. It is interesting to note that the commercial benchmark for vendor fraud and compromised card activity is 0.06% to 0.09% of the total dollar value spent. The Department of Navy's rate is less than half of the commercial benchmark. Um, the measure of the effectiveness of our oversight is, is that since November of 1998, only 38, 38 cases of fraudulent activity has been reported by the Naval Criminal Investigative Service. I would like now to address some of the departments of initiatives to improve our purchase card program. First, the Department of the Navy is in the process of moving from a manual purchase card process to a fully automated purchase card system, such as the Enterprise Resource Planning System. Second, the Department of the Navy has increased training of the Department of the Navy's employees to reinforce proper purchase card usage. And finally, the Department of the Navy is conducting electronic management tools such as Citibank's newly fielded dynamic reporting system that will permit it to better analyze purchase card transaction data. In conclusion, the purchase card is a vital acquisition tool for our service members and civilian employees. I commend the General Accounting Office audit team for identifying opportunities for the Department of Navy to improve an extremely complex program. The Department of Navy is taking actions to improve its existing program. This concludes my statement. I'm readily available to answer your questions, sir. Thank you very much. We thank you very much. Uh, we now go to uh, the uh, uh, Jerry Hinton, the Director of Finance, for Defense, uh, Finance, and Accounting Service. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Jerry Hinton, and I'm the Director of Defense, Finance, and Accounting Service. I welcome the opportunity to discuss with you the responsibilities for paying uh, purchase card bills at DFAS. The DFAS purchase card payment process is in accordance with the DOD financial management regulation and DOD policy memorandum. Specifically, DFAS performs a prepay audit review or audits before charge card payments are made. The prepayment review or audit includes checking for the uh, procurement instrument identification number, PIN, and if needed, the sub procurement instrument, instrument identification number to spend. Um, we check for pays, name, and addresses. We check for that the invoice date is later than the purchase order date, that the invoice is an original invoice, that the estimated, estimated date pay date is correct, that the appropriate payment office is identified by the line of accounting reference, that the prompt payment or certification is provided, that the correct amount is being paid to include int interest where applicable, and that the only charges certified that approved by the approving official are being paid. Um, in the case of the Navy, the entitlement system is called a standard accounting and reporting system, STARS, one pay, automatically schedules the payment through a dispersion module to pay the payment when required. Now I would like to address the GAO draft that discussed duplicate payments for charge card invoices. We have confirmed some duplicate charge payments were made at, um, at DFAS San Diego during the, the period covered by the audit. 
Most of, the, of these payments were caused by uh, Citibank error. Um, shortly after the duplicates were discovered, Citibank systematically corrected the problem that has contributed to the, du that contributed to the duplicate payments. All duplicate payments identified were recovered from Citibank. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my remarks, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. And uh, we now have Patricia Mead, the Acting Deputy Assistant Commissioner, Office of Acquisition, Federal Supply Service, General Services Administration. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee. I am Patricia Mead, Acting Deputy Assistant Commissioner, Office of Acquisition of the Federal Supply Service. I'm pleased to be here on behalf of the General Services Administration to discuss the government-wide purchase card program. GSA has been responsible for contracting for purchase card services since 1989. The most recent purchase card contracts were awarded in 1998 to five banks as part of the GSA Smart Pay program. The purchase card was initially adopted as a management tool. The purchase card replaced the paper-based, time-consuming purchase order process for small dollar procurements. Now, as the primary payment and procurement method for purchases under $2,500, the purchase card currently saves the government approximately $1.2 billion annually in administrative costs. In addition to these administrative savings, the government received refunds from GSA contractor banks in excess of $50 million last year, based on total purchase card charges of $12 billion. Because the GSA Smart Pay program was designed as a managerial tool, agencies have numerous tools for oversight of the program. GSA mandated that contractors provide electronic reports to agency managers. These reports are secure and easy to access via the internet. Agencies use these reports to assist in the identification of questionable transactions. For example, split purchases, improper cardholder limits exceeding a cardholder's contract warrant authority, and fraudulent activity. While all payment mechanisms are subject to a certain degree of risk, GSA has built safeguards and systematic controls into the program designed to minimize risks. For example, when accounts are set up, agencies determine what limits to set on each transaction. They are able to set limits by dollar amount per transaction, number of transactions per month, total per month, and the types of businesses at which the purchase card may be used. In addition, the agency decides to whom a purchase card should be issued, any limits on use of the card, approval procedures, roles and responsibilities, and degree of agency program oversight. Most agencies establish their operating procedures at the department level with further refinements in the field locations. The controls GSA established in the contracts with the banks operate at multiple levels. Each cardholder with account activity is, is in, a given business, excuse me, in a given billing cycle receives a statement from his or her bank at the end of the cycle. This statement is a critical control. The cardholder receives training to understand the importance of promptly reviewing and approving the accuracy of the statement in accordance with agency policy. Operationally, after the cardholder reviews the statement, it is routed to an approving official or certifying official who approves the statement. This review is intended to validate all transactions as proper. Training has been established for all reviewing officials, emphasizing the need to report suspected card misuse to the agency program coordinator or to the inspector general for further action. Liability for transactions made by authorized cardholders rests with the government. If the card is used by an authorized cardholder to make an authorized per to make an unauthorized purchase, the government is liable for payment and the agency is responsible for taking appropriate action against the cardholder. The contract provides for agency program coordinators to oversee the program. The role of the agency program coordinator includes ensuring that cardholders properly use the card and monitoring account activity. Because GSA Smart Pay is a critical managerial tool, agency program coordinators receive numerous reports on cardholder activity from the banks. To simplify the oversight process, transactions can be segregated by dollar amount, merchant type, and frequency of transactions with specific merchants. Although reports can be helpful in identifying questionable purchases, review and approval of transactions at the local level continues to be our most effective control mechanism. GSA recognizes that cardholder training is essential to ensuring proper use of the card. GSA provides online cardholder training free to all purchase cardholders. 
The training discusses how to make purchases with the card, roles and responsibilities of cardholders, and ethical conduct. Many agencies choose to supplement this training with written, oral, or online training of cardholders on agency procedures. GSA requires that all contractors participate in an annual training conference for purchase card program coordinators. Subjects of the annual training conference include electronic reporting tools, industry best practices, fraud monitoring, and card management controls. The contractors are also required to provide on-site training to agency program coordinators. Written training materials provided by the contractors include cardholder guides and agency program coordinator guides. Excuse me. These address authorized uses of the card and responsibilities of the cardholder and the agency program coordinator. As part of a continuing effort to improve the card program, GSA has recently formed a purchase card roundtable comprised of 25 agencies, which will address issues of concern, including fraud and program audits. This is an opportunity for agencies to share experiences and learn from each other. Finally, there is a full electronic record of all transactions under the GSA Smart Pay It's fraud or misuse far easier to detect than in a paper-based environment. A strong training program, state-of-the-art tools, and a detailed review structure gives federal agencies all the tools and internal controls necessary to effectively run the purchase card program. But as stated in a recent GAO report on strategies to manage improper payments, people make internal controls work, and responsibility for good internal controls rests with all managers. Agencies must use the tools GSA has made available. GSA will continue to work with our industry partners and our customer agencies to minimize risk to the government and ensure proper use of the cards. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my prepared remarks today. I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Well, thank you. Our last uh, presenter is uh, Deidre Lee, Director of Defense Procurement for the Department of Defense, and I gather you uh, do not have a written statement because you've been out of town and you came back for this hearing. So thank you for coming. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. It's a pleasure to see you again. Um, we, we've worked together on some other issues. I do not have a written statement for the record, as you mentioned, but I am here to tell you that I would like to assure you that the Department of Defense takes financial responsibility very, very seriously. We will look into these issues regarding the purchase card and other financial issues that have been raised, and I certainly look forward to working with the GAO, the services, and this committee to make sure that we have demonstrated to the taxpayer that we're spending their dollars wisely. Well, we thank you with that, and we'll now go to questions. And uh, let's, uh, let's start with Mr. Coots. Uh, you've heard this testimony. Do you think they'll solve the problem, or is this just talk? As I said earlier, I, I know uh, Captain Valdez mentioned his enterprise resource uh, system or off-the-shelf package is being implemented. I think that will certainly uh, help automate some of the processes. But what we're talking about here, Mr. Chairman, I think is a pe people issue a leadership issue and an accountability issue. And I, I think that they have clearly the capability to do it. I've read the backgrounds of these folks. They've got fine service to our country, and I certainly don't have any doubt that they can fix the problems. But it's going to take attention and you know, some of their precious time. I'm sure that they are busy with lots of things in the positions that they're in, but they're going to have to spend probably a little bit more time on this type of issue to make it happen. What do you think? Uh we should do have a three month rule for this group also and uh, will you be doing uh, a, a check uh, and repeating what you've already done put in your blue cover and uh, see if the recommendations are being implemented or is this we, just we could certainly do that as we said earlier we're looking at this issue beyond these two locations for you in a broader study of DOD purchase card usage but certainly we would hope to work with these folks to uh, deal with the recommendations and find uh, valid ways to implement them and if you would like us to report back to you this fall on that we'd be happy to do that let's uh, get it done by uh, uh, November 1st <laughs> And then in the meantime, you're going through t two more operations, I take it, from what We'll probably said. look beyond that. We have not looked at the Army or the Air Force, so we'll probably take a look at Army and Air Force. I think the 500 frauds 
that uh, Senator Grassley mentioned, I believe 322 of them, based on my notes, are Army related. So probably Army is the place that we will uh, focus some case studies on in the immediate or short term. Okay. Uh, you, uh, uh, Admiral Lippert, it's your responsibility, I take it, throughout now the Defense Department and you would have the same policies for the Navy that you will for the Army and the Air Force. I take it through well, from the now sub's perspective, we set the policy for the Navy, and now as director of the Defense Logistics Agency, I would be setting the policies for within the Def Defense Logistics Agency, which is separate from the rest of the Department of Defense. Right, but that is the right uh, button to press to yes, get sir. something to happen. Yes, so, sir. So uh, I'm sure you'll solve that problem. Uh, Mr. Coots, the, uh, in Admiral Leppard's testimony, he said the Navy rate of vendor fraud and compromised card activities is less than half of the commercial benchmark. Given your findings, do you think he's correct? Uh, Mr. Chairman, in listening to the Vice Admiral's Mr. testimony... Mr. Uh, is assistant to Mr. Coots. In listening to the Vice Admiral's testimony, he stated that uh, commercial fraud is at Citibank is between 6 and 9 percent. That was 0 0.06 and 0 0.09 percent. Yeah, it's one, actually it's 0 0.006 and 0 0.009. It's, those are basis points. And it's about, they're running, right now the credit card industry is running fraud at about 6 to 9 basis points. Uh, we did not check to see whether the Navy's was half of that, but if they're 0 0.0 for that would be significantly higher than what the credit card industry is, which is 006 to 009. The uh, numbers I was, I was quoting were correct. It's, it's, yeah. As I said, it was 0 0.06 percent, which is not 6 percent, but 0 0.06 of 1 percent. And the numbers that we got are quoted from Citibank. What's the best thing GAO can give to the Admiral? that is the most important thing for him to look at in the next three months? Probably reducing the number of purchase cards. We're taking a long, hard look at why there are this many purchase cards out there. It does appear uh, for the Navy that there's uh, 47 or 48,000 purchase cards based on what we found in the records. Uh, I think there needs to be a look to see if that is something that's really controllable or is that just way too many purchase cards to control? So I think the first line of defense here would be looking to make sure that we have the right number of cardholders. Because the more cardholders you have, the harder it's going to be to train them, to monitor them, to review their transactions, et cetera. So again, I would recommend that as the first thing to take a look at here. One other thing, and Mr. Hass can probably expand on this, is that those compromised accounts that I mentioned are still live out there. And I think somebody needs to immediately cancel those accounts. And I'm Bob, do you want to add to that? Could I, uh, could I address that point, uh, sure, Mr. Chairman? Uh, the counts that he is referring to were identified uh, uh, by us in the Naval Criminal Investigative Service, and they asked us to keep those accounts open while they were doing an investigation. So why they are still open is based upon their suggestions and their direction to us as, as an ongoing investigation. Any comment? I I understand that law enforcement would need some of those accounts to stay open, but when you have 26,000 accounts open, 2,600 accounts open, you have the, the vulnerability of almost $230 million worth of fraud if they got into the wrong hands and someone was able to exploit that. I think that that's an awful lot of vulnerability to uh, leave sitting out there. Well, I, I must say, when it seems to be that uh, they're getting very high uh, cost computer handheld, this and that, and they can go out and uh, just simply say, well, we needed it for whatever we did, and instead they're making a few bucks on the side. Is that what you saw in some of this? Yes, those were some of the types of cases uh, that we reviewed. And if you were in the Admiral's place, what would you do? Would you just say, uh, look, you're going to have to, if, if you're doing it for the Navy or the Army or the Air Force, we expect you to use that card in that way and not 
go out and make yourself a fortune. Well, I'm sure those controls are in place and those expectations are in place. I think that working with the credit card industry, and as they said, they are working with Citibank on the front-end loaded software that recognizes abnormal purchases and recognizes fraud, is really the way to go. The credit card industry, when they found fraud creeping up, put a lot of money into research and development and developed front-end loaded fraud control. And they were, they've been successful from 1984 until the present in lowering, lowering fraud from close to 30 basis points down to seven or eight basis points. So I do believe that technology and working with the industry on the front end loaded systems are the way to go. When uh, the GIA started looking at this, did they have any, re any reports from the Inspector General of the Navy or Defense or Army or Air Force? Where's the Inspector Generals on these? The DOD Inspector General is doing a department-wide study that has not been released. There were several Naval Audit Service audits done of the public works, and I, I don't know if they were requested by the captain or not. It sounded like they maybe were. Uh, one of those was issued in December of 1999 and had some of the same issues that we found for 2000. The other one was done for fiscal 2000, and I believe that the captain was briefed on that, and we do not know the results, so he may be able to elaborate on what the Naval Audit Service found with respect to public works. Uh, Admiral, when uh, the GAO noted that 2,600 purchase card accounts were compromised and many of these accounts have been hit for items such as jewelry, pizza, and other inappropriate purchases, uh, why hasn't the Navy canceled those accounts and just let them work their way back. Well, the, that, uh, Mr. Chairman, that is the direction that we have from the Naval Criminal Investigative Services to keep those accounts open while they're doing an on, ongoing investigation for fraud. So that was the, that's why we haven't canceled those immediately. So the, that service of the Navy is working on this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then I guess Mr. Hast, uh, why did the Office of Special Investigations get involved in the compromised card number case? Did you develop information that would uh, help to identify the source of the compromised numbers, or what? Yes, as part of GAO's review of the Navy Purchase Card Program, the Office of Special Investigations was asked to review ongoing Naval Criminal Investigative Service uh, investigations. One investigation was the one with the 2,600 cards, and we were especially interested in that because that had, seemed to have the greatest vulnerability. While well, NCIS initiated an investigation with a Secret Service Task Force, we conducted an investigation in which we developed information to help NCIS identify the source of the 2,600 numbers. Specifically, we were able to identify that the addresses were on the list were shipping addresses, and they were a number of merchants that kept this type of information. NCIS has now identified that merchant who has verified that the list came from their database and the two, two former employees are targets. Ms. Lee, you're the Director of Defense Procurement. Tell me how your office can solve this, solve this problem. Mr. And, Chairman, and we... do you have ground rules out yep, of your office? Yes, sir, we do. We have department-wide policy, Department of Defense-wide policy on how the purchase card is to be used. As was discussed by um, GAO and others, we set the department-wide policy, which is then implemented at the various services, at the very u various units. It certainly does run along these lines, which is make sure that people that need the card have the card, that their supervisor is aware of it, review of their purchases, and an overall review of the system. And we will certainly take a look at where, if anything, we need to strengthen those policies including training for both the individuals and the supervisors to make sure we're protecting the cards. Had you uh, had any knowledge of what was going on here uh, in the last couple of months? Yes, sir. I was aware there was a review ongoing at those particular units. I was also aware that we have um, various uh, IG looks periodically and also that at our, our regular procurement reviews that the services conduct of their various units, they look at their purchase card programs. Well, did you call in the various service IGs, the various service uh, people on the financial side? or? How do you operate on behalf of the Secretary of Defense? 
Uh, periodically, as, as certainly as these kind of issues arise or as we find them from our normal review process, et cetera, we try to put out and we discuss that I have an interdepartmental staff where all the services come together and we talk about these kind of issues and what they're doing at each service level. I also meet with the other defense agencies who do, not, although not represented by the major services, we have a good number of people out there in that area as well. In addition to that, we look at what our overall policies are and periodically put out updates, reminders, uh, additional information to the whole department for the credit card program. Uh, do you have other situations like this? And if so, what are you going to do about it? Mr. Chairman, um, we certainly are going to make sure that every time in every instance where there is a, a purchase card issue or a perceived issue that we investigate the appropriate circumstances and take the appropriate action. As has been mentioned here, there, the purchase cards are a valuable tool. We just want to make pe sure people are using them correctly. Mr. Chairman, last week, just for your information, GAO testified on purchase card problems at the Department of Education. And so that's another place that we're aware of some of the same types of issues as we reported on here. Well, I thank you on that. Uh, Captain Valdez, going back to your computer purchases, you told GAO that the acquisition of flat panel monitors, which cost between $800 and $2,500, that that was justifiable because they use less energy with the traditional 17-inch monitors which cost approximately $300. Could you share with the subcommittee the study showing that the savings in electricity offsets the additional cost of a flat panel monitor? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the benefits are uh, in power savings. We've seen numbers upwards of 75 percent in the recent uh, consumer reports uh, indicates as such. Uh, but it's not just, uh, and, and electricity uh, savings is important in California, as you, you might imagine. Right. Uh, but it's not just uh, I power. I advise people to take a candle to California. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I've got one my, in my briefcase. Um, but it's not just power. It's also we, we buy these flat panels for shipboard use. Uh, we put a, a whole network of uh, ultra-thin clients on board Coronado, USS Coronado, the flagship uh, for Third Fleet. And the purpose there was to uh, save space, uh, reduce the heat on board the ship, and to, uh, to maximize the efficiency of the space that's available to the crew members, which already are very tight quarters. Uh, so uh, there's a number of, uh, of um, benefits to the flat panel display. The price is coming down significantly. And uh, we feel in many areas with power savings, it's also immune, fairly immune to, uh, well, it is immune to electromagnetic radiation effects. Uh, so if you have a CRT near a, a high-powered transmitter, for example, uh, you'll see distortion with a standard CRT with a, with a uh, flat panel you won't. Uh, so from a military point of view and from a uh, space, electricity, and uh, weight point of view, uh, it becomes very important. For the Marine Corps, we, uh, we put vans uh, for radar uh, air traffic control. These are very small vans, Mr. Chairman, and we use uh, flat panels to save uh, limited space in those vans. I'm also prepared to discuss some of the GAO findings as they relate to fraud if you uh, feel it's necessary. Thank you. Well, we can get to that. Do you think the computers should be bought one and two at a time, or do you think the Navy should buy computers in bulk like other government agencies in order to get the best prices? That's a valid point, Mr. Chairman. I, I'm going to look into to how we might improve our purchase procurement process with respect to bulk, bulk versus individually. Uh, right now, we buy these, uh, these uh, systems by project uh, because that's the way the accounting works in the Navy Working Capital Fund Command, and I have over a thousand different projects at the command. So uh, the challenge there is going to be uh, to align the dollars with the project uh, to make it uh, to make it work. But I'll look into that. How many Palm Pilots uh, did you have to give away? As it seems to be, sir, uh, we have used Palm Pilots just like uh, most folks in business do. Uh, to, to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the worker, of the and, workforce. And what do you find on that uh, that does for you? Well, what it does is it allows people to manage their time effectively. It allows them to retrieve data fairly quickly. Uh, I use it personally to uh, be able to, to, uh, to manage my time during the day. Uh, well, is it everybody that has to have one? No, sir. I, I see some of that here, too, but 
uh, it just seems to me that uh, not everybody has to carry one of these around. Yes, sir. There can and, be and, a scheduler that does that. That's a valid point. We normally, uh, well, we, for all purchases, we require that the supervisor or approving official approve the, the, the purchase. And so if, uh, if an engineer or scientist feels he needs a Palm Pilot or one of our legal or, uh, or professional staff members, uh, then the supervisor will make that uh, determination, sir. Now, you haven't had uh, that uh, up to now, so is this a uh, new policy? No, sir. Uh, so we've always had a policy. We've always had a policy where the approving official uh, makes a determination on every purchase. Uh, that's been a, a long standing policy at the center and, and in, in accordance with Navy and DOD policy. Who has to sign off on a Palm pilot? The, the uh, supervisor and the approval official, sir. And what rank would that be? Uh, it's typically a, uh, a, a typical supervisor is an engineer, uh, roughly at what we call the DP3 level, uh, DP4 level. So it's a senior uh, supervisor engineer with uh, typically 10 to 15 years of experience in government service. Uh, so that's really the level of approval that occurs. So this is on the senior uh, civil service. Then. Yes, sir. It's it's individuals who have seniority within the, within Navy. How about the uh, uniformed? Is same, that well? It's a similar a similar approval. Same uh, person. We only have 80 military personnel, so uh, it's a typically a small a smaller uh, group of of, uh, of people, but. Uh, it's a senior level person. Uh, in the case of a, of a lieutenant, if a lieutenant needs a Palm Pilot, it'll be his supervisor, his or her supervisor. What did they do before they had a Palm Pilot? They carried a lot are of paper. Are you thinking of a slide rule? Are we still they, out of that? Slide, well, I, it's slide rules and, and paper is what they yeah. carried, sir. But it seems to me you've got to make some tough judgments. Yes, sir. And, and I'm going to look into these that. These are little toys for a lot of people. And gee, you know, I'm at such and such a level. And look, I've got a Palm Pilot. Mr. Chairman, I will. I'm, I'm going to look into it within my command. Meanwhile, the taxpayers are making out their yes, 1040s and all. So, uh, could you give us some examples where you feel the organization's uh, purchase card program was effectively managed, and what are you going to do about it real fast? Yes, sir. Uh, our, our management is, uh, is as, as I mentioned, at various different levels. Uh, we have uh, management controls uh, across the command. I mentioned the approval authority. I mentioned the supervisory controls. Uh, my plan is to reduce the number of cardholders. I've already reduced it by 18%. Uh, I intend to improve training. Uh, we currently train every cardholder before the card is issued. And we have a very good track record in making sure that every cardholder gets training before the card is issued. What we need to improve is on refresher training, and I'm going to work to improve that uh, posture in my command. When was that training uh, implemented? The, we've, we've always had that policy uh, at the command. Well, and if we've had uh, that policy and we've got fraud, I don't know why uh, we can't get a new system. Yes, sir. When the GAO came to my command, they, uh, they looked at all the folks that were, uh, were carrying cards, and we provided them with uh, assurances and documentation that they were all trained. Where, we, where we we're weak on is some of the documentation to prove that the individual is trained. But all of the members of my command are trained uh, with prior, to, prior to receiving the card. The other area is refresher training. It's required every two years, and we will uh, uh, work hard to catch up in that area. For those that uh, seem to be mall happy, uh, do we just take the scissors and uh, cut the card in half? Yes, sir. It would save a lot of taxpayers' money. Yes, sir. In the cases that the GAO has highlighted and other cases that I've, I'm aware of uh, from our own internal controls, uh, we uh, revoke the card immediately. Mr. Coots, is there anything you want to add? Yeah, I, I, I'm sure with Captain Valdez said about the uh, flat panel monitors is, is probably accurate, but I would note that we found them in the accounting department and with secretaries also. So I, I'm not sure how that relates to the mission he was talking That's about. That's the power savings aspect uh, that I was referring to. There. And I, I did read the same consumer report in July, and I think according to that report, the entire cost of operating a normal computer for five years is about $57. So I. I would like to see his study that demonstrates the cost benefit of the electricity savings. But I do think that 
the, the Navy take, needs to take a look at what they're buying with the purchase card. If we're going out and buying one and two computers at a time, are we paying full retail and are we getting the full benefit of having the, or are we you know, outweighing the savings that we've got from the streamlined acquisition process? The same thing with Palm Pilots, whether they're a valid government item or not, I'm not, I'm not certain. I know a lot of people that have them and I'm not sure of anyone I know that their government or the private sector company has actually paid for them. So they need to take a hard look at what actually is being purchased and if the purchase card is the right vehicle for it. Because my understanding is that buying computers in bulk results in substantial savings. And I know at GAO we buy them four or five hundred at a time. Right now our numbers show that roughly 10 percent of our total computer buys is flat panel. So it's not, uh, it's not a pervasive uh, issue throughout the command. It's roughly 10 percent. But I'll look into reducing that number. Yeah, Captain uh, Suresh, the General Accounting Office noted that one of your employees effectively stole $2,500 by accepting a personal reimbursement from an insurance claim for stolen government property. Now, what action has the Navy taken against this individual for pocketing the reimbursement that belonged to the government? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, we were aware of uh, a number of, uh, of the issues that uh, GAO uh, discovered. Um, that one, though, was one we were not aware of, and uh, um, uh, discipline, uh, administrative discipline, uh, um, is uh, is quite possible. That is currently under review. We just found out about that uh, a very short time ago, sir. Was it just one case, or do you know about more cases? In, in, uh, that is the only case uh, with those particulars that that uh, uh, I'm aware of, sir. Now, some of your employees were buying at Macy's, Nordstrom's, and Sam Goody. I don't know who Sam Goody is, so enlighten me. Uh, sir, the, the Nordstrom's buy was, a, uh, was actually uh, safety shoes. Um, we uh, provide our, our uh, uh, mainly a, a blue-collar uh, workforce. Our, our 1,700 folks, for the most part, are blue-collar, blue not white-collar, and um, um, out maintaining bases in uh, and, and a lot of our folks need uh, safety shoes, and, and we, uh, we, author, uh, we pay for their safety shoes. In this particular uh, case, um, we had uh, one of my female uh, employees uh, purchase uh, um, uh, um, a, a set of safety shoes at Nordstrom's for uh, $99.95, sir. Um, that's, uh, I, that, that's not what we're, we were talking about three gift certificates, I believe, for $1,500. I think he's talking, we, we're okay with the safety boots. We didn't question the safety boots. There, there is a, sir, on that there is a case. Um, the General Accounting Office discovered uh, seven uh, um, purchases that, uh, that uh, 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 sparked their interest, um, all from the same individual. Actually, there were 22 a total of 22 transactions that we were already aware of and taking action on this individual. Um, the action we took was we uh, uh, referred this uh, case to the Naval Criminal Investigative Service. Uh, that uh, I do not have uh, the final outcome of that, uh, of that uh, uh, particular investigation. At, at my command, sir, um, we, we have uh, canceled 54 cards. Now, some of that was because we had some employees leave, but it was also because of misuse. I currently have 30 cards suspended um, as of the close of business Friday, and these were because our internal review process now has found things that we don't like um, are, going, uh, are going on. Um, there are three individuals uh, that misuse was so serious that essentially I tried to fire them. Um, in the civil service system, I issued them a notice of proposed removal, and uh, uh, one individual was in fact fired, uh, one resigned, and one uh, was able to retire before I could uh, complete administrative action on them, sir. Well, thank you. And that started last Friday? Uh, Nothing um, like a good old congressional hearing. Uh, no, uh, uh, Congressman, th those are, uh, uh, th that is not, uh, those aren't, aren't actions since last Friday. The actions um, I'm talking about are, are within the last year, sir. Um, as I mentioned in my testimony, um, we did a major overhaul at my command, effective in the fall of 00. zero. Um, and unfortunately, the, uh, the GAO review of, uh, uh, of things at my command it was essentially before my major changes were put in place. I don't want to sit here to tell you that I've got a perfect running uh, process 
but it is much improved from what uh, GAO saw during their on-site last year, sir. Mr. Hinton, you pay the bills. Don't yes. you have some kind of auditing control that would send up a red flag if a bill came through with large purchases made at Macy's or Nordstrom's? Um, the way the system works today, um, sir, we we see the bills, but the details behind it, uh, we do not have the details available to us. Um, we rely on the process that the department has in place, that the certifying official, the people that have signed off on these purchases, uh, have looked at them and reviewed them. Wouldn't we, common sense in your organization say, wow, there's a real red light here? I mean, um, DFAS, what good is it? I mean, if you can't uh, look at the check and say, good heavens, $2,500 for this? And, you know, especially when you're seeing <coughs> Macy's and Nordstrom's. Um, as, as I said earlier, we, we have, we cannot see that as Macy's. We know we receive a certification that says from the particular service that the, um, under the certifying official, that that responsibility relies uh, with the person that does the certification. We have um, attempted to go in and look at some um, Merchant category codes. Uh, we did a study. We have an operation in um, Port Wanimi called Mongoose to go in and look at some of the transactions, but they are after the buys normally and um, it's more after the fact uh, as opposed to before the payment is made. Well, when you get that, uh, it's really a purchase order of sorts, isn't it? Uh, yes, uh, yes, sir. Or are they paying it out of their pocket and then turning it in? I don't think so. Right. And it just seems to me DFAS is, you know, they've fouled things up for the last 10 years that I know about in Columbus, where that place was just a mess. Now, I know you've uh, improved that. And uh, they were knocking off $1 million checks to people. And when they phoned up and said, I didn't have that contract. And uh, good heavens. I mean, it was uh, like a little baby having a, 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 a great little uh, sort of Pooh Bear type uh, dropping things in. And good luck. And boy, it's coming manna from heaven. So what can your operation do? And why can't it do something? Well, thanks, Mr. Chairman, for recognizing some improvements in Columbus. I would say, in the, in just like the people that mentioned at the table, um, DFAS, uh, as a part of the department, will look at ways we can also improve in our, our processes as well. Well, that's where I raised the flag of uh, why the inspector generals didn't catch this sooner. And uh, it just seems to me we put them in there so they could get at things like this. And so good old general accounting office that comes in and does it. Uh, Mr. Coots, anything you want to add to this? With respect to uh, preventing the payments of places like Nordstrom and Macy's, et cetera, the key control there is the monthly certification, which doesn't take place at DFAS. Uh, that takes place at the activity. And that's why it's important that uh, each month before the bill is paid, things like the Nordstrom's, Macy's, et cetera, get flagged so you don't pay them, and rather than the pay and chase type of situation where you pay it and then you go back and try to find out later you'd overpaid for things that weren't yours or were improper purchases. So that is the key control to making sure that you don't pay improper payments. And uh, Ms. Mead, uh, does GSA have this problem throughout the federal government or? What's your reading on this? We're not aware of fraud unless an agency reports it to us. Mm -hmm. So you've set up a training program. We have a training program, and we have extensive electronic reports that enable the agencies to make their controls work. The, the data is available and very visible. <clears throat> well, are you sure that those training uh, exercises are being done. We're sure they're being done. We're not sure that the things that people are learning are being put into effect. Well, what would you do about it? Can you help them? 
I mean, you're putting training in. And then it seems to me that every agency has an inspector general, and they could certainly ask, is the training being done? Now, that training is by GSA, or is it by the agency? GSA makes training available on a website, and the contract requires that the banks provide <coughs> training to the agencies. So we do know that the people that attend the training once a year at an annual training conference. Okay, so mm -hmm. could they find whether training has occurred or not just by asking the question? Of each of the departments Each and department. I mean, you're there because centralization in the Hoover Commission said, hey, we could save money for the taxpayers. Now we find the tax <coughs> taxpayers nobody seems to care much about. And GSA ought to. You got a very fine administrator there. And I would think he would get at this. Well, we see our role as putting the tools in the hands of the agencies so that they can have effective controls. So you've got a model training program, is that it? We think we have a good training program. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could you file uh, for us at this point in the record just to see what it's like? Yes. So sure. give it to the staff and uh, we'll put that in the hearing record. Thank you. Anybody else want to make any points on this that we haven't asked why uh, this is your chance? Mr. Chairman, there's two more I would make. Um, one other thing that I think Senator Grassley pointed out is management of the issue of credit limits for individual employees on a monthly basis. That's something that the Navy probably needs to take a look at from the standpoint of should everybody have a twenty or twenty-five thousand dollar limit or are there some that maybe could get by with a couple thousand dollar a month limit which as Mr. Haas said earlier reduces your exposure. The other idea that was raised, and I'll let Mr. Haas expand on it, is the issue of credit checks, which probably does have some merit, because some of the frauds that we've seen are for people that had prior credit problems that were then given a government credit card and then, you know, committed frauds. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Haas? Yes, I agree. I think it would be prudent that prior to giving someone a government credit card with a, with a very high uh, credit limit on it, we would check their credit and make sure that they behave responsibly in their personal life. I think someone that doesn't res behave responsibly in their private life is much more likely not to behave responsibly with the public's money. Who do you see should do that credit check? Is it uh, the bank? Is it the Navy or the Army or the Air Force? And I think it would be the it? whoever is issuing those cards. The Whichever command is actually giving out the card should set up a mechanism that they're able to check, uh, to do credit checks. I mean, they're very easily done now on the, by computer. They don't take a long time and they're not very expensive. Well, is it easy for them to get the check? And have, if so, do they have to pay a fee for it? They would have to pay a fee for it. What is the fee? What is the fee? I, I would have to go in. I, I'm not yeah. positive. Well, perhaps. Captain Surash and Captain Valdez would know. I'm not familiar with the fee for a credit yeah. uh, check, Mr. Chairman. Well, maybe that's because nobody's ever done it. But let's look into that, and uh, we ought to check on people's credits. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to briefly discuss the, uh, the abuse issue. With your permission, please. The GAO uh, came to audit my command in August of last year. They spent 10 months at the, the total period of the audit was 10 months long. During that time, they looked at 50,000 transactions and they used an automated tool for that, which uh, uh, we're trying to get from them on, on how to automatically review 50,000 transactions. But they started with Citibank data from what I understand. And they found 78 cases of suspicious vendors, what they term suspicious vendors, 78 cases out of 50,000. Now we have, of those 50,000 transactions, they resulted in 6,000 vendors. And then they looked at each vendor to determine whether or not it was a suspicious case or a suspicious transaction. I had our legal and uh, inspector general look at the GAO list. And they found the following. Of the 78 vendors and transactions that were suspicious from the GAO's point of view, the vast majority, 62 cases on the list, were for legitimate government purchases and transactions. 
There were six cases of stolen cards or third-party fraud. There were five cases in the jail list that we found through, the, through our Inspector General and legal to be cardholder misuse, not fraud, but mis misuse. The total value of that misuse is $2,107. Every dollar is important. I take this seriously. But just to put in perspective, it's $2,107 out of $45 million in transactions. There were four cases of erroneous use of the card, and there was one possible billing error. So in summary, out of 50,000 transactions, it totaled $45 million. GAO data itself revealed five cases of cardholder misuse for a total of $2,107. I'm taking action, and I've already taken action on many of these cases, and I'm going to pursue it. But I just wanted to make sure that we put in perspective, because I do not feel we have a problem a serious abuse and fraud problem at SSC San Diego. In fact, I'm pretty proud of our workforce. I'm proud of their honesty and integrity. Over 99.98% well, of our purchases are for legitimate government use. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Coots, you want to come? We really only looked at supporting documentation for the two commands now for four, four to 500 or four to five tenths of 1% of the transactions. What the captain's talking about are our automated tools where we download it from Citibank information into our system to scan it for obviously abusive type things such as the coach store which popped out when we did that. So I don't think we, we didn't look at 50,000 transactions. We scanned through for obviously fraudulent or improper type of things. So to say that we looked at 50,000 transactions and have no problem with anything but what we found is a mischaracterization of our findings, I would say. Sir, I did not say they looked at every transaction. What I said is that they scanned 50,000 transactions for all vendors. From that, they were, they, they were able to pull 6,000 vendors that our command uses. And from that, they looked at 6,000 vendors and determined that there were 78 suspicious vendors or transactions. And that's the methodology that they used that you're using too is that correct i'm sorry sir can you is say that, that the one that uh, you're using as a well what i would like to do is that automated tool i mean right now we do all this by hand it's a manual process i mentioned that enterprise resource planning will help me automate that process but i'm also interested in, fr in tools to detect abuse and whatever tools i can be provided for i will use it is the uh, gao able to transfer that material They've given us enough information to be able to, uh, to find that tool, yes, sir. Okay. Any other comments? Well, uh, Captain, the last comment I'll ask is your staff justified the purchase of a leather briefcase from the coach store as being more durable and thus less expensive in the long run than other briefcases. Do you believe the federal government should be buying all of its employees briefcases from the coach store? No, sir. That was a uh, abuse of the purchase card. I've written a letter of, uh, of caution to the employee, and she, uh, she's a good employee, Mr. Chairman. Uh, she uh, probably made a, an honest mistake and uh, happened to be at Nordstrom's and purchased that bag, and, and I think she'll do better next time. I won't comment on that. <laughs> Let's see. In closing, uh, this and we will check back three months from now just as we're doing with the last group from the Pentagon this last week uh, with the advent of the new administration we anticipate the type of problem we've been discussing today will be resolved Secretary Rumsfeld has been very clear in his desire to make the Department of Defense accountable for the money it spends and I want to be equally clear in my endorsement of that policy the examination of government-issued credit cards has only just begun. I want to thank all of our witnesses today. I'm sure there are ways you would have preferred to spend this morning. Let's hope there won't be need for another hearing on these two programs. I would like to thank the staff to uh, put that together. And uh, this is on our side and the um, minority. Uh, Jay Russell George behind me, Staff Director, Chief Counsel, Bonnie Heal to my left, your right, the professional staff member and Director of Communications, Scott Fagan, Assistant to the Committee, Chris Barkley, Staff Assistant, 
uh, David Holfish, intern, Samantha Archie, intern, uh, Fred Ephraim, intern, Christ, uh, Christopher Armato, intern, minority staff, David McMillan, minority council, Michelle Ash, minority council, Jean Gosa, minority clerk, and Christine Smith, Nancy O'Rourke, and Lori uh, Shatuka on. And uh, that's our court reporters. Uh, so we will have a hearing where uh, uh, we can uh, go over these things about three months from now. So we'll be looking for that. So with that, we're adjourned. The U.S. Senate returns today at 1 p.m. Eastern for a period of morning business until 2 p.m. At that time, they'll begin debate on a motion to proceed to the Agriculture Supplemental Appropriations Bill, which contains 